All right, so thank God for this truth. Gonna be the name of this class. You gotta thank God for this truth, y'all. Hey, a lot of stuff going on in the news. A lot of stuff is going on in the world. And if you ain't in a position where you wanna just thank God for you knowing who you are in this day, of, in, in, in this last and evil day, you're not in the right spirit. Thank God that you're not where? In Christianity. Thank God, man, you ain't still running around in the church. Hi, I'm a little bit. Damn, shut up. Thank God you don't came out that witchcraft, bro. Thank God you just don't came out the strip club, boy. You get, you keep your fifty five hundred extra dollars now with your tricking self. You just tricking all. You ain't you ain't you glad you ain't tricking no more, bro? Huh? <laughs> Woo, boy, you gonna pay your bills on time now? You ain't tricking no more. Thank God for the truth. You ain't smoking the weed now. They smoking all type of weed. They calling it gas. They got all kind of crystal meth crystals on it and stuff like that. Ain't you glad you ain't smoking crack no more? <laughs> ain't you just glad for the truth? All right, we're going to start up, man. We're going to go to Hebrews 10. I went over Hebrews 11 last week. So we're going to jump back a chapter and go over some Hebrews 10. And thank God that you in this truth, man, because you could be doing a lot of different stuff. If it weren't for this truth, a lot of these brothers, man, I'll tell you now, a lot of us be dead or in jail. Ain't no doubt in my mind I'd be either dead or in jail if it weren't for this truth. I know for a fact, if not dead, I've been back in jail for selling, doing illegal stuff. How I know? Because all my partners went back, and if I was hanging around them, guess where I'd have been? Right back in the jail cell somewhere. All right? A lot of, hey, a lot of us be dead if it weren't for this truth. So you want to thank God that you're in this truth, man. Don't worry about what your family members say. Uh, they're going to try to say you're in a cult when you first come in here. They're going to try to say, um, uh, uh, yeah, basically you're in a cult and stuff like that just because you you don't do the things that you used to do. Matter of fact, give me that scripture first. Give me first Peter's. I think it's four. Let me look for it right quick. They're going to try to say, that you in the coat, but they up there saying hollering, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. They hollering, uh, Happy Easter Day. I did cut and say, Happy Easter Day. Who all had to say that speech when they were young? Your girl, they put you up, they put all that Vaseline on your face. Shine you up real good, and you go up there with your little ruffle socks on. Your Easter suit. Who all wore Easter suit for real, though? Had your Easter dress. But we in the coat, though. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they had the Easter egg hunt. Thought you were fine. I know. I thought I was shopping. Hell, in my, I had a green Easter suit. Huh? Watermelon green with the red tie. Woo wee. Had a Jerry curl, too. Shut up, Rachel. Had a Jerry. Couldn't tell me nothing. Couldn't hit me in the butt with a red apple. Huh? I'm Jerry <laughs> no Jerry Carroll jokes. <laughs> we were still in West Tennessee. It was in the 90s. We were still wearing curls, but we didn't know. <laughs> we had curls and gold teeth. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had curls and gold teeth. That's how we done it. Hey, but uh, I love what trying to thought. Where I tell you to go? First Peter 4. Four, I think. Four and three. First Peter's four and three. Read that right quick. So don't let nobody tell y'all y'all in the coat. Man, be thankful that you in this truth. Come on. The book of First Peter, chapter four and verse three. Uh -huh. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. All right, see, all our life we've been living the will of the Gentiles, of the other nations, man. We've been doing all, we've been worshiping all their gods. Not some of them, all of them just about. Come on. When we walked in lasciviousness. Lust. We walked in what? Lasciviousness. All right. Uh, look up the word lasciviousness right quick. For people who may not know, that's not an everyday Negro word. So we was walking in lasciviousness when we was in the mind, in a Gentile state of mind. Lasciviousness. All right. What that say? Lasciviousness. F filled with or shadowing. Excuse me, no. filled with or showing sexual desire. All right, so we walked in, walking around, filled with and showing sexual desire. You know, you walk around with lewdness, 
uh, uh, women walking around, especially the women, filled with lascivious, walking around half naked, breasts out, butt out, filled with wilt and showing sexual desire. Been the great to celebrate what? Valentine's Day. We was walking around doing this thing, and what else to say right there, bro? Lewd, lewd, lustful, lascivious. Uh huh. Acts, thoughts, arrested for lewd and lascivious assault. All right, so filled with showing a strong sexual desire. That's what lasciviousness is. Now go back to the scriptures. Now your understanding says when we walked the will of the Gentiles, we was doing these things. Y'all don't understand these Gentiles as they was living under in the time of Rome when we was living in the, these were some nasty people. I just want to show it to you right quick. I just, I just got to show it just for the sake. I know Valentine's Day coming up. Pull me up a Lupercalia. You know how to spell it? Lupercalia. It's L U P C A L Calia. <laughs> Maybe it'll come up. I don't know. Let's look. Just look up some images. Let me show you what these people are doing. We see images like this, and we never understood it when Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and Donatello, you know the Ninja Turtles, <laughs> Raphael. These was artists. And they painted this stuff, man. Let's show, let me just show you what he was saying. We was walking around in this stuff. So this is what you got to be. Uh, who I would hear to say when you're in Rome, do what the Romans do. Yeah. Who, we don't hear that. Because guess what? When they was going to Rome and when they when they was in Rome, they was doing some filthy stuff. All right. Do you got any pictures of it yet, bro? Yeah. Y'all see this right here? All right. You see a man dancing with another man naked. Y'all see that? These are pictures they had. Dude down there just taking a little white girl. He just taking her, just got his arm around her neck. She's like, no. Then she finna hit him across the head with her breast hanging out. Like, no, you can't take my sister. She grabbed him by the hair. Y'all got to see this stuff. Then you got a man tied up in the back, butt naked, with vines going across his chest. All this picture stuff means stuff. Then you got little babies over here, too. One baby carrying another baby on his back. One baby laying on the ground. Everybody naked. Go to another one. I'm just showing, not the same picture, go to another one. These were strange lascivious. This was lewd acts they was doing. And this is called, this is where they get Valentine's Day. I'm just letting y'all know they was raping and taking. They was raping and taking. That's what they was finna do. And the little kids, go go to another one. Or maybe go to ancient Roman art or something. I don't know. Let's look at some more. What's that right there with the whip? The origins of Valentine's Day. I'm going to go over there, too. Because our people thought Valentine's Day meant love. I'm mean, going to love me if you don't buy me no car, no ring. I moved the uh, whatchamacallit out the way, and I need it on the big screen, bro. I can't see. Come on. All right. Now, now blow that one up. See what's going on. All right, so I can tell you what he's doing here. All right, so Valentine's Day, the day of Lupercalia, they took the skin, the hides of dogs, all right, and other animals, and they beat women with it for fertility. They'll take it and make a rope out of it, and they beat her bloody. That's why Valentine's Day is red. That's why it's, it's never, it's, it's, that red represents blood, all right? But go to something else. These were lasciviousness, lascivious acts that we done, all right? Go down to that picture. Yeah, click that one right there in the, uh, that look like some stone or something carved in the wall. Now, I that. Look at it real good. Yeah, pick that one right there. These people are nasty. And we was following their guys. Y'all see everything going on here? You see men laying down with babies butt naked, women laying down looking at the, this stuff. They didn't just make this stuff up. This stuff was really going down. And you probably can find some pictures worse than this. But I'm just showing you, everything about Rome is naked. It's about lasciviousness. Where do you think they got the word romance from? You think you want to be romantic with your wife? <laughs> That's where they got the word romantic from. It's the root word of romantic is wrong. The root word of romance is wrong. So in order for us to learn how to love our wives, we have to do it the romantic way. 
And this come later, little baby lay in the bed with you, a dog, put the horses in the bed. I don't know. Dude holding the little baby. He butt naked, holding the, turning the little boy head. I don't know. Let's get it off this. These pictures was here for, they didn't just come, these, these were stuff that was actually going on. These pictures actually tell a story. Now, let's go back to what Paul said. And they try to say we in the cult, and they sit up there and celebrate this type stuff. All right, come on. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 4 and verse 3. Y'all ain't never asked y'all said why Cupid always a little naked white baby. <laughs> he always naked, ready to shoot somebody in the ass. It does, that ain't right. Come on. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. All right, come on. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust. All right, that lust is what they were saying. That there was all kind of lust going on in that picture. They didn't have TVs and uh, social media. They didn't have TikTok back then. They had to draw it. But if you look at it today, they got TikTok and everything. You will see a lot of stuff, this stuff going on. Valentine's Day got something to do with love and all that type stuff. Chocolate. Why chocolate? Look up this stuff. Chocolate is supposed to be what? Some kind of form of an aphrodisiac, right? It's supposed to stimulate your sex drive and all that type stuff. You got to ask yourself, why? What did the man buy the woman chocolate? To get some booty. That's what it went all boiled down to. Why did he buy that ring? Why he buy that car? Then they have us celebrating stuff in school, man. They have you. I remember being in school, you get Valentine's Day card, put a suck in it. Then you try to say put two suckers in there for the little, little girl you like. Hey, you in the fourth grade college yourself trying to like somebody. <laughs> they done that stuff. And the teacher allowed it. Have Valentine's Day party. Eat the little hearts with the little sayings on it. Only for you. And you are always mine. Be my Valentine. All this type stuff. And we done it. And our parents had no objection to it, you know, because they didn't know, they didn't understand. And they was too busy trying to work and, I guess, uh, feed us. But they never looked into it. It wasn't their time to get the knowledge that we have now. All right? That's why I say thanks God, you and this truth in this, in this day and time. All right? Come on. Excess of wine. All right? And then we ran into lasciviousness and what? Excess of wine. When we was drunk and all them, when people got naked on them pictures and stuff, they were drunk. And you know you get drunk, you you know anything goes. Anything goes. All right, come on. Revelings. All right, revelings was the party. Orgies. All right, come on. Banquetings. All right, banquetings, they ate while they was there. Come on. And abominable idolatries. Uh-huh, and abominable idolatries. All right, they was worshiping other gods. Come on. We're in, they think it's strange. All right, we're in now. You're not following on that. <coughs> they going to what? Think it's strange. They think it's strange. Ain't that crazy? They say you in a cult. They think it's strange when you're not celebrating Lupercalia. And that was just an example. I can go into other holidays that uh, the origins of other American holidays, and you'll see worse than that. You'll see worse than that. You go into the origins of Christmas, the Christmas tree. Hell, he was having sex with his mama. You can just go into, it, it always goes back to something nasty. And America has adopted these things because they are the originators of nasty stuff. They sick. Come on. Wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them. And yeah, they think it's strange you don't celebrate Christmas. You don't celebrate Valentine's Day. They're going to be running around with their little Valentine's Day stuff on here in a few weeks. Happy Valentine's Day. You say you look at them like you're crazy. Or what your husband get you for Valentine's Day? We don't celebrate. They're going to look at you with their lip turned up. You don't celebrate it. Girl, you don't know what you're missing. You don't know, you know how many unwanted pregnancies happen? How many black men and women are getting STDs in one night called Valentine's Day? Abortion clinics, man, full. Hey, they, they run out of the, what's they call the day after pill? <laughs> it's crazy. This stuff is all set up to keep us in sin. Come on. To the same excess of riot. All right, they get mad when you don't run to the same excess of rioting uh, like they do. All right, come on. Speaking evil of you. And they going to do what? Speaking evil of you. Your family members going to do what? Speaking evil of you. Your old high school, your friends, your buddies from college, your, your family, they going to do what? Speaking evil of you. They going to speak evil of you just because you're not doing the same thing that you used to do, which is what they're doing, something stupid. Because you don't teach your kids a bunny lay eggs no more. They're going to look at you like you stupid as hell. 
what is it, what is Easter about? The guy Ishtar. If you look that up and look at some of the pictures, you're going to see it's about fertility. It's about them laying around naked again, having all kind of orgies, and, and it's some about um, fertility. Why the bunny got to lay eggs? The bunny don't even lay eggs. It's a mammal. <laughs> so guess what? Them eggs falling out of the rabbit's behind symbolizing something. It's symbolizing something. You got to look it up, all right? Google the origins of every holiday America has set up. That's what I do. Every That's what I did. Like, every holiday that was coming, I started Googling the origins of Valentine's Day, the origins of Easter, the origins of Christmas, the origins of, what's some more? Thanksgiving. The origins of, just look at this stuff, huh? The origins of St. Patrick's Day. When is St. Patrick's Day? Huh? Who knew the date? March what? Oh, man, bro, I know you was wearing green. <laughs> How could you know that date? Everybody else had a problem, bro. <laughs> Everybody, yeah, he had a green everything. You had the little hat on, look at your own hat. <laughs> hey, brother, what, what, bro, glad you was in the truth. Thank the Lord for the truth. You run around thinking you were Irish. <laughs> but you fell for it, though. <laughs> Who know the date? I thought to know it was gonna fall for it. Everybody know the St. Patrick's Day date, don't you? Everybody know that, don't? You? Nope. <laughs> Go ahead, read. <laughs> Verse five. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? All right. So let's start right there, y'all. So we gotta always thank God for His truth and His amazing grace. All right. So, ah, oh, I said amazing grace. I had a. I want to do something with amazing grace. Who remember the song Amazing Grace? This ain't a trick question, man. Who remember? <laughs> Who remember Amazing Grace? Who know how to sing it for real though? Who's a singer? Huh? Who know the words to Amazing Grace? I need the words. Yeah, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Hey, just Google it. Google it. It might be Google it. See if Amazing Grace lyrics. I wonder who uh who wrote this? Was it black people? You sure? You know they're still some now. It was Preston stole life. <laughs> Ain't nothing but a hound dog. He stole that from a black woman, calling her man a hound dog. They're still some stuff now. The Beatles, they stole everything. Hey, see who Googled it first. Let's see who wrote it. Let's see the original writer of Amazing Grace. I'm thinking Esau wrote it, but I'm thinking they, they stole it. Yeah, I need the original. Amazing Grace. Who originally wrote it? <coughs> Hold on, I'm going to break it down, huh? John Newton. That's the original. You know we got plenty of versions. That's the original one. That's the first one. What year was it? Seventeen hundreds. All right, that might be in it then. He stole it from his man that was working for him. I bet he stole it from his man's now. All right, so let's pull up the lyrics to Amazing Grace then. John Newton. Yeah, you know he stole. He looked like a thief. <laughs> he looked like a thief. Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. All right, so you want to thank God for this truth and for his amazing grace. And I just wanted to pull the lyrics up on this song because a lot of people sing this in church and Esau sing it. And that's how you know I, I started to listen and look into the lyrics of it. And it started to make me think that they really didn't write this. It says amazing grace. All right, so we want to go into the Bible. Well, we'll wait before we do that. It says amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch. What is a wretch? I said a wretch, not a wench. <laughs> I'm a wench. Give me wretch. Give me the definition of a wretch. Not a wench. You know, sound we say a wench. Wretch. A wretch. There it is at the bottom. Come on. A person in very un in a very unhappy or fortunate, unfortunate state. All right. 
So what led me to believe that now that black man may have wrote this or a black woman, for one, we the best songwriters, right? For for two, now go back to the lyrics. It says an unfortunate or unhappy person. It says amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved, that saved a wretch, meaning an unfortunate. Now, this wrote they wrote this in the 1700s. Were these people who wrote this of the picture of that man, were they in an unfortunate place? No, they wasn't, right? They had us in captivity. Hey, they in heaven. They said they saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. Was they ever lost? They always knew who they were. It's not talking about they was lost and they ran out into the woods and they couldn't find their way home. All right? I'm going to go back and pull some scriptures on this thing. That's my first time ever doing this. All right? This is off the fly. It says, but now I am found. So you got to thank God for the truth. Now you what? You are found. All right? So it says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I just want to go back to that. First, let's get what grace is right quick. That's how I know some black folks wrote this, man. If not, the, I don't know. The most high put it on Esau to write this stuff. But it sounds like somebody in slavery to me. Just like the song Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. Coming forth to take me home. That's it, right? There was black people swinging that, singing that they wanted the Lord to send his chariots down to take us back to where we come from. Take us back to our land. Take us back home. Come get us out of this cotton field. This was the type songs they sung. But I'm sure if you pu pull it up, who wrote it? It's probably going to be Esau. But come on. Um, what did I tell you to get? You want Grace? You want Grace Kelp? Yeah, give me Grace. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 11. Leave, this, leave the lyrics on the screen for me, if you don't mind. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. All right, so in the, script, uh, in the song it says that uh, his amazing grace... Um, what's going to bring salvation? Read that again. Uh, amazing grace. No, no, oh. the scripture. Titus two and eleven. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. All right. So that amazing grace that we are under, which is what we're going to get into the class about, that we're supposed to den to the deny. The ungodly, the ungodliness that we was uh, once in, that we once lived, to deny Valentine's Day. Somebody say, hey, <laughs> no, I don't celebrate that. To deny Christmas, to deny your children, your husband or your wife, to, to deny it. No, I no longer celebrate it. That's what grace is about. I'm going to deny the ungodliness that I once was in. I'm going to deny Tyrone. Or Rodney, I don't want you no more, Rodney. My legs is closed. I don't know. You can't. Nope. I don't. Nope. I don't care how good it was. Nope. I'm denying it. You gotta deny. Uh, Keisha. Love Keisha or Shy Keisha. Give me some more of them good old ghetto name. Y'all from Mississippi? Give me some of them good old names. Just give me a good ghetto name down there. Laquanda. Laquanda. Yeah, you got to deny Laquanda. Her and her whack. I'm gonna say that's a stripper, bro. You right? <laughs> huh? You got to deny Mercedes, man. Tell her I ain't tricking no more. You can't have not a nail, not a one of my dollars. You got to tell her I am no more. I repent it. You got to deny the ungodliness, deny the wickedness, all right? Come on. Titus 2 and 12. Come on. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. All right, and this this grace is supposed to teach us, this amazing grace that this, this songwriter wrote about is supposed to teach us that it's, it's, it's to deny the ungodliness. And the grace is truly amazing. That's how you know Esau, they didn't write this. Come on. And worldly lust. Uh huh. We should live soberly. All right, we should live soberly. All right, come on. Righteously. Righteously, come on. And godly in this present world. When it's talking about soberly, it's talking about to not be drunk off the lies. All right, not to be drunk off the lies, cause the wine is what uh, Michael two and eleven is talks about us being drunk off the philosophies and lies. Okay, of America. So this grace is supposed to teach us to deny. The ungodliness, all right, and to live sober, meaning not to be caught up in the lies. Come on, 
looking for that blessed hope. All right, looking for Christ, that blessed hope, getting the kingdom, the salvation of Christ, us taking this world back and putting it, giving it back to his rightful owners. That's what we're looking for. Now go back to Amazing Grace on the screen. It said, Amazing Grace, how sweet, sweet. I was trying to think of a precept for sweet. All right, I know one. Oh, uh, give me Psalms one forty nine. How sweet the sound! Cause you got to remember when this was written, we was in slavery. Now let's let's see how sweet the sound. I think it's Psalms one forty nine. Like I said, I'm shooting from the hip with this. The Book of Psalms chapter one forty nine, verse one. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. They said, do what? Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. So that's that sweet sound. That we under grace, and now we got to sing unto the Lord a what? A new song. It's a new song that got to be sung. That's why I thank the Lord for this truth now. You don't have to listen to music about black men killing one another all day. Excuse me. You ain't got to listen to all the music talking about you don't need her. You know what I'm saying about how much weed you can smoke. You don't got to listen to the women. You don't have to listen to music no more talking about twerk, yeah, twerk, 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 throw it in a circle, all that stuff. You don't have to listen to that no more. Leave him. You don't need him. You can do bad by yourself. You ain't got to listen to Mary J. Blige no more, even though she was jamming, wasn't she? <laughs> no. ah, well, you don't need her. She was telling you. You were just fine by yourself. You don't need no man. That's what she was telling you. Like what you see when you're looking in the mirror. Everybody want to look at me. All that stuff right there. Living just fine, 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 fine. All that stuff. You don't have to listen. You got truth music now because you got people now. We are singing unto the Lord a new song. All right. You don't listen to Beyonce, Cardi B, teaching our women how to be whores. All right. If you still listen to Cardi B, if you still listen to uh, what's that uh, Nicki Minaj? What's the other? City girl. No, city girl. See, I don't know nothing about no city girl. Yeah, Megan, Megan the Stallion. You still listen to that? You you conditioning your mind to be a whore? Cause that's what they are, whores. They promiscuous. They don't give a dog on who they show their body to. If you're still listening to that stuff, you you, you your mind is still messed up. You got beautiful sisters in the truth that's making music on uplifting your spirit, uplifting your soul. That's what you want. Just like the men, you got you got men, strong men now that's making music telling you that, you know, you don't have to sell drugs to make it. You don't have to kill your own brother. Let's see about the new song that we're supposed to be singing. And I try to in every one of my verses I write to sing to the Lord a new song now. We'll read it again. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. That's that sweet sound. He said, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. All right, come on. And his praise in the congregation of saints. All right, and we're going to sing this in the congregation of the saints. Come on. Let Israel rejoice in him. All right, let who? Israel rejoice in him. It said, let Israel rejoice in him. Come on. That made him. Let us rejoice in God that made us. Okay, come on. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. We are the children of Zion, and we're supposed to be joyful in who? Who's the king? Christ. See, y'all act like y'all just ain't really just sure. Don't y'all say Joe Biden. Damn sure don't say Donald Trump. So I'm going to ask this again. Who's the king? Christ. See, that sound better right there. So now we're supposed to do what? We're supposed to rejoice. Read that part again, bro. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. All right, the God is the one who made us. Come on. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. We got to be joyful in our king. He's coming back to deliver us, whether they like it or not, whether it's COVID-19 or 20 here. He coming back to deliver us from the hand of those that hate us. We got to be joyful in that. There ain't no white man cracking the sky coming back to save you. All right? He's not going. He's coming. Shh, white man ain't come to save you for nothing. White man come to pick you up. He's taking you to jail or to the, to the morgue. <laughs> he, he ain't coming for, to save you from nothing. All right? Come on. Let them praise his name in the dance. All right? Let us praise his name in what? 
in the day. So this the sweet, this the sweet sound. This the amazing grace. How sweet the sound. The sound of the music when we're dancing at high holy days on the feast day, or when brothers are performing, brothers and sisters are dancing now. All right. And I ain't talking about throw that ass in the circle. Nope. Throw that ass in the circle. Go, girl. Go. Ain't none of that. None of that. The old women like, what the hell are you talking about? That's a song they had when I was DJing in the world. That's what they kept saying. Throw that ass in the circle. She get out there and throw it in the circle. Big as she can. <laughs> oh, Lord. It was awful. But... When I was we was involved in lasciviousness and, and our worldly lust, we thought that was cool. We thought that was all right to do. To sit up there and watch your sister or your uh uh yeah, your sister degrade herself. You know what I mean? And they do it to this day all over Facebook. Don't care because they are sick. Come on. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. All right, that's why we make music. All right, come on. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. All right, the Lord takes pleasure in us doing these things. That's serving the Lord with joyfulness and gladness of heart. All right, come on. He will beautify the meek with salvation. All right, he's going to beautify us with salvation. Come on. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Uh huh. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. So we're supposed to sing aloud upon our beds. When we go to sleep at night, we're supposed to be singing, be joyful. All right, this was um, yeah. Just keep reading. Let's so it says sing unto the Lord a new song, a sweet sound. As the, as this author or songwriter wrote, that sweet sound is going to sound like what? Come on. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged <coughs> sword in their hand. So it got to be a two-edged sword in your hand. All right, what's the two-edged sword? What you got? Hebrews four and twelve. Let's get that. Say so it says, sing high praises upon your bed and let a two-headed sword be in your hand. It's talking about literally a two-headed sword because it's going to tell you here what you're going to have that two-headed sword for. But now in this day of time, this the two-headed sword we got to we gotta sing about. And it got to be in our hand. Come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful. The what? The word of God. Is quick and powerful. The word of God is quick and powerful, read. Sharper than any two-edged sword. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword. So what are we supposed to be having with us in this day and time? The Bible. Now, when Christ come back, it's going to be a different story. That's why I say the two-edged sword is twofold. All right, come on. Piercing I even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. See? All right. It's, that's what the two-edged sword is for. Now go back to Psalms. 149 and read where you left off at. The book of Psalms, chapter 149, verse 6. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. All right, so that's what we're supposed to be singing about now. We ain't supposed to be rapping about and singing about killing and destroying one another. We're supposed to be rapping and singing about what? That, what they say again? To execute vengeance upon the heathen. We're supposed to be rapping and singing about executing vengeance upon the heathen. That's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? But you cut on the radio stations today, what we rapping about? What they play on the radio? Us doing what? Selling dope and killing one another. But it's a new day. It's a new song being sung on earth. They won't play us on the radio. I guarantee I'm going to make sure. <laughs> I'm going to rap about putting, just sing about whatever, putting chains on Hillary's neck. That's right. Yeah, she need one. All right, read that again. To execute vengeance upon the heathens. Yeah, we're supposed to rap about getting uh, payback on the heathens. Come on. And punishments upon the people. Uh-huh. To bind their kings with chains. All right, we're supposed to be rapping about putting their kings in chains, like uh, Trump, like Biden, like uh, whoever. We're supposed to be rapping about putting their kings in chains. Come on. And their nobles with fetters of iron. Uh-huh. To execute upon them the judgment written. All right, to execute upon them the judgment written. The judgment written is what? He that leadeth in captivity shall what? Go oh. into captivity. That's the judgment written. That's what we're supposed to be rapping and singing about. So if you ain't got your mind made up to that yet, and you still listening to Yo Gotti, uh, give me some more of these dudes. NBA Young Boy, give me some more. Pop Smoke. I think that's somebody's name, man. Who else? Young Dolph. Young Dolph. Come on, man. Some of these. Yeah, yeah, little baby. And oh, the ba yeah, the baby. The baby and the little baby. Damn, he got kids. Yeah, man. They got these little demons. 
First thing they do getting tattoos on their face. That's right. the first sign they're a damn demon. Like the one that just got killed, King Von. King Von. Yeah. yeah. He look, there ain't no damn king. Right. <laughs> to be a king, you gotta be what? Establishing a kingdom. We can say we kings because what? We establishing a kingdom right here on earth. They ain't doing nothing. They just take the word and just throw it out there. Just like the black woman. I'm a queen. And she got on some damn apple bottle jeans. Uh, and what? Yeah, boots with the fur. Apple bottle jeans, boots with the fur, and damn yeast infection. <laughs> Talking about she a queen. Nets flying everywhere down there. <laughs> These damn flies just keep bothering. Somebody eating watermelon? No, that's you. <laughs> you smell that? In the club, throwing it in the circle. Whole club funky. All right. But read that again. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. See, praise ye the Lord. See, that's why you go back to amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That's what it's supposed to be. To that saved. All right, give me Luke 1 and 68. Thank God for this truth and his amazing grace. I don't know why I put that, but now I just wanted to look up the lyrics to amazing grace. Because this they got to get this song from somewhere. It's going to be a great sound, a sweet sound in the ears of... The sheep, the lost sheep. Malcolm X said it. He said, look, if it's good news for the sheep, it got to be bad news for who? For the, wolf. the damn wolf. <laughs> if it's good news for us, it's bad news for them. That's the sweet sound we singing about. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 68. Because it said that shall, that, that save. Let's see about what save means. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he had visited and redeemed his people. He will have redeemed his people. Who know the precept to his people? What you got? You may think this is talking about everybody. Because blessed be the Lord God of Israel who have visited and redeemed. When he visited us, he woke us up. We were asleep. But now he has come to visit us. Whether it was through your husband or through a video or through your wife, or through your cousin, the Most High visited you. What's the what's the precept? Matthew two and six. That's one that says my people. I want His people. So you want to bring this His out? You want to make it be for sure? I think it's Psalms one thirty five and verse twelve. I could be wrong, but let me look. Yes, sir, that's it. That's, that's it. Yes, Psalms sir. 135, verse 12? Yes, sir. All right, listen to this. It sounds better than, you know, in Matthew it says, my people. That's good as well, but check this one out. The book of Psalms, chapter 135, and verse 12. And gave their land for an heritage, an heritage unto, his, unto Israel, his people. Unto who? Israel, his people. All right, now go back to where we was at. You said it said his people. Now you have some scriptures that say my people. Israel, like my people have been destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You, you can go to Matthew for that one. You know what I'm saying? Because it's going to say the same. You want to find something that's going to say the exact same thing. If you if you can't, you can still go to my people and prove your point. But that was just another precept to throw in there. All right, so let's go. The book of Luke, chapter 1, and verse 68. Come on. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. It said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. It didn't say nobody else. Come on. For he had visited and redeemed his people. He had visited and redeemed his people. Who is his people? Israel. Okay, come on. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. All right, so who is the horn of salvation? Another word for horn is what, man? No. Kind of, sort of. If a rhino has a horn on him, what is that to him? His what? No, he's strengthening his legs and his in his Huh? If he got if I got a a, a rhino, right? Just think of, of a rhino. And he got a horn in his head. What is that horn? Raise your hand and stand up. Yeah, just raise your hand and stand up. His what? That's his protection. His, his... No. Who knows? 
if he has raised up a horn of salvation, when you hear the word horn, all right, who is that back there with the hand up? Yosef, what you got? A defense. Yeah, it's a defense. But what is it to him? His what? What you got? It's a weapon. Yeah, I'm getting there. But what? What is a weapon to someone? His what? No, it's not protect. It starts with a P. It starts with a P. His what? His power. All right? So when it speaks about horn, it speaks about, it's speaking about power. Because that horn to that rhino is his power. Y'all got it? Which is he's going to use his power to do what? To protect them. All right, so go back. Now read about what you was ra raised up a horn. Luke 1 and 69. And have raised up an horn of salvation. So that power of salvation. All right, that horn is his power. It's, it's the power. Christ is the power. Okay, come on. For us in the house of his servant David. So he done raised up a power that's going to deliver us, that's going to redeem us out of the lineage of David, which is the tribe of who? Judah. Come on, man. The Judah. tribe of who? Judah. All right? That's why I said out of the house of who? David. David is come from the line of the, the tribe of who? Judah. Judah. All right. Now you get it. Come on. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Why does it say as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets? What you got? Your soldier Elisha right here. Because uh, all the prophets spoke about Christ. Instantly. There you go. All the prophets spoke about Christ coming. All right. Come on. Keep reading. Which have been since the world began. Uh -huh. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. Back to amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved. All right. Talking about Christ. These scriptures. Okay. A wretch. Wretch means unfortunate. Old slave like me. <laughs> I once was lost. All right. So give me. Uh, what's that? Matthew 11. Is 11, 18? 18 11. 18 11, yeah. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 11. Listen to this. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. See, the Son of Man have come to save that which was lost. Talking about us. You was lost in what? Christianity. You was lost in Islam. You was lost in everything. All right? Come on. How think ye? If a man have a hundred sheep. All right, go back. Verse 11. No, you know what? Let's just, let's, all right, let's just uh, wipe all that off. The amazing grace thing. I was going to get into some more scriptures right quick. Let's go to Hebrews 10, which I said I was going to go into. Um, first, let's go to Psalms 51 and 5. 51 and 5. The thank book. God for this truth. Why would you want to thank God for this truth? Listen. The book of Psalms, chapter 51 and verse 5. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. All right, so he's saying that he was shaping into iniquity. Read. And in sin did my mother conceive me. All right, you were shaping into iniquity. All right, and in what? And, 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 and in sin did my mother conceive me. All right, in sin you was conceived. So when you fell out your mama womb, the first thing you learned was what? Sin. Sin. First thing you learned, celebrate your self-worship. Celebrate your birthday. One year years old. Can't even talk. Smash a cake in your nose. Eat the hell out of it. All right? You was, went from that to Christmas. You started to condition yourself to sin when you was born. So this is why you got to thank God that you're sitting here today, that he bought you out of that. His amazing grace, all right? Bought you out of that, all right? He could have left you in it. But it's only a few people that's understanding that it's good not to be in sin. They think we crazy because we're not following the same assets of writing they are. So it says from in your mother's womb, you was fashioned. And when you came out, you was living in a world of sin. That's basically you was learned to um, condition to be a sinner. All right. That's what David was saying. 
All right, and Psalms 51 and 5. All right, let's go um, Isaiah 1 and 9. Thank God for this truth and his amazing grace. Got to. I know I do. Even though I may mess up, I get back up, and guess what? Still thank God that I found out that who I was before I died. You know how many people died last night? Look at on the news. They probably say, hell, 400,000. Now, what's they saying? 5,000 dying in one day? You know how many of them 5,000 people didn't know who they were, according to the Bible? And that's just with COVID-19. Guess how many people just died just naturally, like maybe from a sickness or somebody that died in Chicago from a gun violence or, or anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Or eating in these major cities or places. How many people died in a car wreck last night? They ain't even counting that. And they did not know who they were. Had no idea what an Israelite was. Had no idea what language they spoke, what food they ate, where they come from. Come on. The book Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 9. Come on. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. It said, except the Lord of hosts, God left unto us a very small remnant. That's why we know the scripture is true. Like out of all the thousand people in this area, area like from here, Nashville or whatnot, whatever city you go to, it's only a small amount of people in one building right now as we speak today learning who they are. It don't matter what, what school or what camp, it's all, I can guarantee it's only a small amount in there, just like in here. If it's, I don't care if, it's, if they got a school that got 500 people, 500 compared to 20,000 people or 50, 60,000 people in one um, city, that's a small amount. Come on. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been at Sodom. All right, we should have been burnt the hell up. We would have been at Sodom and what? And we should have been like unto Gomorrah. All right, we would have been, um, we would have been destroyed because God destroyed them for their wickedness, all right, for their lasciviousness, all right, for their um, lewd acts. God destroyed them. And he said if he wouldn't have left from us sitting in this room, America would have been destroyed. That's what people don't know. This is why God hasn't destroyed America yet, because he had to fulfill the prophecies of waking his people up first. All right. If he didn't do that, that means the Bible wouldn't be true. If he just blew up America, boom, and just left us all asleep. I'm sure he probably wanted the wickedness we are. He probably wanted to do that. But he said, no, I got to fulfill my prophecies. I'm going to wake him up. He's going to move here. He wake him up. He's gonna move there. He's gonna wake him up. He's gonna wait, and everybody's gonna start to come together. And I'm gonna do what I said I was gonna do. I'm gonna cause them to remember who they were in the last day. If it wasn't for us sitting in this room, guess what? America would be destroyed, no doubt. Look at all the stuff they done done to people. America done done everything to everybody. You think Japan ain't got nuclear weapon? They could have been on send missiles over here. All these countries could have been on to destroy America, but he didn't. God didn't let it put it on their on their minds to do it yet because he's waking us up that's why you got to thank god for this truth you know it's not no game it's no coincidence that america don't want nobody else to have um well they want to give permission who got these weapons of mass destruction they don't want the wild man they don't want uh ishmael to have it because the bible says that he's a wild man he'll blow up himself you and whoever else around it's not, the Bible is true. Us coming together, knowing one another, God already prophesied that we was going to be in this room. That we was going to learn the truth of who we were. All right? And some people take it for granted. A lot of men take it for granted. They treat their wife like a dog. And a lot of women take it for granted and treat their husband like a dog. And not understanding that you need to be thankful that he's trying to show you how to escape the destruction that's coming to this place. You got to be thankful. You got to be mindful on how you treat one another because destruction is coming. A lot of people don't believe it. People don't believe, hell, you can cut your husband out one night and hell, destruction can come before you're able to tell him you're sorry. That means you get total, you get, get condemned in damnation for eternity. You don't understand that. All right? But keep reading. Verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. All right? So hear the word of the Lord. You No, no, no. All right, let's go to another one. All right? Give me, uh, we ran over grace. All right? Uh we know that grace is Titus 2 and 11. 
all right? It's teaching us to deny ungodliness, right? So you can't continue to sin. Give me Romans 6 and 1. You can't continue to sin and say you're under grace. That ain't going to happen. Once you come into this truth and know who you are, that's it. You've been marked, all right? Once we teach people, whether it's on, um, on the streets, Facebook, whether it's in Clubhouse, whether it's in um, any social media or whatnot, you, you mark once you know. All right? It's up to you now to do what God requires of you. Once you know, it is what it is. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? All right. What shall we say then? Shall we continue what? In sin. What is sin? Uh, Omel, what's sin? Give me a scripture. Uh, First John three four. First John three and four. Sin is what? You got it, bro. Yes, sir. All right, read it. The book of First John chapter three and verse four. Whatsoever, excuse me. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Uh huh. For sin is the transgression of the law. Okay. Now go back to Romans six and one. Romans chapter six and verse one. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? All right. Shall we continue to do what? Break God laws. Should, should, should you just continue to just to celebrate Christmas one more time? Should you just continue to just, you know, celebrate Valentine's Day one more time? Should I just continue to let Tyrone just run at me one more time? Should I just continue to go, she, she, uh, she, uh, what you say her name was? Laquanda. Laquanda how? Should I just go, go, go there one more time? Just because I'm under grace. Can I eat this po child one more time? Just one more shrimp. One more lobster platter. Should you continue to do these things? All right. Read that again. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Shall that, we continue in sin? That grace may abound? That Christ may be abound in us? That's what Christian church think. They ain't never, I don't understand. They say we're under grace, but they continue in sin. They didn't say you in the coat. They do. They'll continue in sin and say you in the coat. Say, they'll say, I'm under grace, honey. Then continue to break God's laws. What Paul say to the Romans? God forbid. God forbid. So he was telling them the same thing. Remember, America's an extension of Rome. Should you continue to celebrate um, these festival days that, you know, Roman, the Romans have set up? Should, should you continue to do that? He said, God forbid, meaning no. Come on. How shall we that are dead to sin any longer? Excuse me. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Uh -huh. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? All right. So you got to understand that when you're baptized, man, you started to believe in Christ. All right. You started to understand and take on the actions of Christ. You started to follow him. All right. Come on. Verse 4, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Okay. That so, like so you're supposed to what? Endure until the end. In other words, all right, until death. Come on. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Do y'all hear that? You got to change the way you do things and be thankful that you're not still walking around. All right. You got to be thankful that you're not still walking around doing sinful things. All right, you got to sometimes just say, hey, how many women just tell your husband, baby, I just thank you for trying to show me the truth. Even though I don't understand it all the time, I thank you for trying to lead me the, into the right direction. You know Christmas is crazy as hell. Santa Claus ain't coming. <laughs> you got to tell him, hey, baby, I just really thank you for showing me that an Easter egg don't lay, a bunny don't lay eggs. I got to just thank you, baby. You don't know. You got to sit and tell them that stuff. Or vice versa. You know, the men might, uh, the women might have bought a husband in. You got to tell them, look, baby, I just thank you. I was on my way to hellfire, but you ran across these videos and whatnot, and I didn't understand it at first, but now I understand it. I just I just thank you. And give them some sugar. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said, that's right. Give them some sugar. All right. So, uh, let's go to Hebrews 10. Oh, you know, we was in Romans 6, right? 
Let's go to uh, what you had some? Go ahead. Yeah, what was you gonna go? The yeah, all right. I was gonna go to 14 first, okay. then we're gonna go to 14 and 15. We was in Romans 6, right? Yes, sir. Let's go to 14 first. And I want a brother, I want uh, let me see. Uh, soldier to Noah, stand up and great answer this. All right, go ahead. The book of Romans, chapter 6, and verse 14. All right, we're going talking about grace. Come on. For sin shall not have dominion over you. All right. For you are not under the law, but under grace. All right. Explain that to somebody who may not know what that's talking about. That you're not under the law of sacrifice, but you're under the grace of Christ. Uh, you want me to get you a verse? All right. So that you're saying that scripture saying that what? You're not under the law, meaning the law of sacrifice. Yes, All right. Sir. What's the scripture to prove we're not under the law of sacrifice? Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. Yes, sir. And, uh, Come on, you should know that. Eight. I'm sorry about that. 10 and, 10 and 8. All right. He said Hebrews 10 and 8. All right. The book, the book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 8. Above when he said, sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin that would is not. Neither had his, thou, had his pleasure therein. Which are offered by the law. I give you verse four. Verse four: For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. All right. So now go back to Romans six and fourteen. Romans chapter six and verse fourteen: For sin shall not have dominion over you. All right. So you hear Christians? See, sin ain't got dominion over me. Come on. For ye are not under the law. See, we ain't got to keep the law. Come on. But under grace. But we under Christ now. You see how they don't know the Bible. It's saying that we're not under the law of what? Sacrifice, right? Because now we go through Christ to do what? Get forgiveness of sins. Right? He gave us a grace time because guess what? Under um what scripture is that? It says under two or three witnesses. Oh, uh it's Durham eighteen? No. It's in these I think Ephesians. Under two or three witnesses, we had no mercy, we got put to death. Y'all don't know me? All right. Let me look for it right quick. Huh? Hebrews 10, 28. Same chapter. Let me see if that's what I'm looking for. All right, that's it. Hebrews 10, 28. All right, why does it say we're not under law, but we're, under, we're not under the law, but we're under grace? Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 28. He that despises Moses' law died without mercy. All right, so if you despise Moses' law, you die without mercy. Like if you got caught in the act of homosexuality, a lesbian, uh, adultery or something, uh, you got caught uh, even breaking the Sabbath. Guess what? You got put to death right then. There was no mercy. All right. Is that it? No, sir. Died without mercy under two or three witnesses. All right. You died without mercy under two. If somebody else say, hey, I see him breaking the Sabbath, and somebody else say, yeah, I seen him too. I seen him too. Oh, you died right there. You died. That's how That's how the law was. It was set up. I know y'all couldn't imagine that. Yeah. The first time, yeah, you cheated on your husband. Guess what? Yo, you got put to death. You get caught, two two people seeing y'all, guess what? You got put to death, you and the man, all right? If you got you cheat on your wife, guess what? You got put to death for idolatry, all right? If you lay down and you having a sore fight with another man, guess what? You got put to death. But now Christ come, he give you time to do what? To get it right. To get it right. Now you can stop having sore fights and get it right. Yeah, you can. You can stop laying down, doing stuff unseemly with women. Other women look like you and get it right. The spirit is running rapid throughout America because you in Rome. Why you think they're trying to legalize all this stuff? Because you in Rome again. They're going to have these festivals again. These orgy, wide open orgies. On TV, Facebook Live. It's coming. 
It's gonna be cool to you see it already. Joe Biden already got a damn transvestite in the office. Am I lying? Did, did, am I the one seeing the only one seeing that? He got a transvestite. Yeah, OC, I ain't lying. <laughs> Messed up. Put him in high office. They finna make it cool. And I'm telling you for a man to lay all these you see these people walking around with these dogs. Who's stay in apartment buildings? And you just see Esau walking around with dogs all the time. All of them got a dog. Everybody got a dog. I think everybody in my or where we stay hell got a dog except for us. Well, they're going to make it okay for you to lay down with that German Shepherd. <laughs> You're going to be born red and hairy all over. <laughs> huh? They're going to make it all right for bestiality and stuff like that that's going to play back into... Um, into play here in America. They already opened the door by saying two men and two women can lay down together. They're going to further, they're going to push the envelope. All right? And they're going to use groups like Black Lives Matter. Well, you can't you can't hate them in the SPL, uh, SPLLC, whatever it's called, SPLC. You can't hate them because she's laying down with the Rockweiler. She's a person just, she bleeds blood just like you. She just like dogs. And some um, black Americans going to be thinking, yeah, you're right. That's hatred. You can't say that. That's what they do now. If you tell two men, you tell Twan, give me another one. Twan and Dante. Bruh, y'all, that's wrong for y'all to do that. Black woman, the first one to jump up. You can't judge them. Why? Because their mind have been conditioned to think like that. You can't judge them. You can't tell them that's wrong. It's okay. They can do that. Black woman, the first one to jump up and defend them because it's just the way she's been think, uh, conditioned to think. And they're pushing the envelope now. They're going to start desensitizing you on the television first. That's how they always do it. They throw it in the movies. They throw it in the cartoons. Desensitize you first. 20 years from now, or maybe not even that long, um, if, they're, if they're still in power, it would be cool for them to lay down with little boys, little girls, um, Animals and everything. What you got, Brother Caleb? Uh, hold on. Say the, hold on. I want you to say it. They just passed a law on this. Already. As long as you're not 10 years older than that child. Hold on. Say it in the mic. Yeah, California passed the law. As long as you're not 10 years older than that child, you can sleep with them. Did y'all hear that? That's pedophilia. And it's going to spread. Just like the marijuana started in California. Legalize it, right? Everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's legalizing in each state. Um, one by one, they starting to legalize, and now it's become a common thing. You don't have to go all the way to Colorado to get some, you know, some weed. <laughs> you don't have to go all the way out to California now to get some legal weed. They starting to legalize. They desensitize you first. Oh, weed is all right. That's go. They're gonna do the same thing with pedophilia, and it's gonna be the black woman right there rallying and with it. Cause she already letting it look. They already desensitizing the black woman. That's why you go to every black parade you go to, every high school game you go to, college game. What they got these little girls out there doing? Twerking, being cheerleaders. That's desensitizing you. I never understood until I came into the truth. When we used to go down to the TSU parade, or we go down to the um, these different parades and these different HBCU schools and colleges and stuff, Lane College and and you'll have a group of black women or effeminate men, and they don't sit up here and train these kids to walk down the line with these big speakers, especially when we go to the Bud Billiken Parade in, in, in Chicago. Thousands of dance groups, thousands and thousands and thousands of little kids, young as five years old, dressed like a prostitute, dancing on the street. Do y'all understand they desensitizing our minds to see this stuff? But black women, you can't tell her nothing. Oh, no. Now my daughter, they think it's cute. Can't tell her nothing. Let my daughter be a cheerleader, kick her leg up in the air and show her coochie every time nigga shoot a shot. You crazy? You're absolutely right because remember when we went out there and you was actually teaching, it wasn't even the women, it was the men that was defending their daughters dressed like prostitutes 
and the whole street got shut down because we almost about to fight everybody it's out about there. TSU that year? Yeah. Yeah. It's the damn, look, I'm telling you, man, it's the men following the woman. It's, gonna, it's destruction every time. Esau know that. They desensitizing us to pedophilia already and we don't even know it. Got them little girls out there dressed like prostitutes. Look, uh, I call them little hell, two-piece bathing suits, some of them. Got glitter all on them and they dancing. They walking like a grown woman. They got eyelashes on. They got lipstick on. They got a long weave. Boy, she in thought training. She's in thought training. And you don't know you got um, Big John just got out of prison for rape. He just done 25 years years and for raping. You don't know what's all these people out here walking. You don't know what's what somebody just got on their mind. They desensitizing us to what? Pedophilia. All right, but going back, I forgot how I got off into that. That's another class, but yeah. But you guys think about this. You think about all the advertising that they do on TV. Think how much money they pay just to put an advertisement out. They change your mind just with the advertising. If if they can make you think that they want you to buy that, they got you right there. So with the clothes and with the cologne, with everything you see on TV, it's like they change your mind what they want it to be. But if if we don't comp compare our mind to the Bible, then like like Cap say back in uh, First Peter, hey, we used to do those things. So hey, through TV, if you watching uh, American Housewives, I I used to catch myself sit down and watch that stuff. When you come in the house, I'd sit down and watch it, show after show after show. Now your mind thinking like what they thinking. Yeah, that's a prime example. That's why a lot of black women, they, they carry themselves after them women. They wear them long blonde hair. And they get, that's where the eyelashes, all them stuff, they come and play. Black women weren't wearing the stuff. Eyelashes been out since the eyelashes. But now they starting to watch these people on TV. Now they starting to wear them. Now you starting to see a lot of black women get braces in their mouth. And all this, whatever they doing on TV, that's what they doing. Women with perfectly fine crooked teeth, been having these crooked teeth. I'm talking about for 40 years. She gonna wait till she's 45. Now all of a sudden she need braces. What the hell? You don't went 35, 40 years with them perfectly crooked teeth. Now, 45 years old, now you want to get some braces. Now ain't nothing wrong with beautifying yourself. I'm just saying the trend that our black people will follow. I ain't saying nothing wrong with getting braces if you that old. I'm just saying you'll see one person doing it. Then you, I got to looking on Facebook. I was like, nah, hell no. Nah. Somebody got to be doing this on one of these talk shows, on one of these reality shows. Nene Leakes, somebody doing this. Somebody they following. Cardi B, somebody. They going to take the white man and the dentist and all this money to get these get their they teeth. And some of them got uh, straight teeth. And they just get it because they got it. Cause they gotta follow the trend. Uh, what's the? They gotta even. Uh, what's the? They desensitizing us with the TV shows, like he's saying. Excuse me. They even got a TV show uh, with the little girls dancing. They in competition. What's it called? It's my dancing dolls. Dancing dolls. There you go. With that woman named D or somebody on there. Yeah, yeah that's in Jackson. Yep. Mississippi. Yeah, we teach over there. Y'all teach over there. Mm -hmm. Y'all look. They desensitizing us, and we don't we don't see it. They been doing it, all right. They been doing it, all right. How? D, she a she a porn star. I'm telling you, man. Just she was a porn star. See what I'm saying? That's that lasciviousness. That's that lust. And we'll sit up there and teach teach our young daughters to do it and train them to do it. It's crazy. It's crazy. So you got to thank God you and this truth and be able to see these things. If not. You'll be sitting up there going to the competition, watching your nieces and nephews and stuff dance around, jump around um, like um, little prostitutes. They got a little training center right there in that little blue building over there. It'd be mostly Edomites over there. You see a little speckles over there, little black folks over there too, but they that's what they're doing, desensitizing our people. What scripture did I have you at last? Uh, that was Roman, excuse me, Hebrews 10 and 28. No, go Hebrews 10 and 28. Yes, about two or three died on the motors. Okay, that's what you was at last? Yes, sir. All right, so go back to Romans 6 and 14. I just wanted to show y'all the grace that we're under. We're not under the law. The book so of you got to thank God for his amazing grace, for real. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 14. Yeah. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, 
but under grace. See, now you're under grace. You got time to repent. You're under Christ. Christ came. He died. He was the ultimate sacrifice that gave you a time period to get yourself together. All right? So you got to thank God that he sent Christ to give us time to get ourselves together. If not, we'd all have been dead. That's what uh, Isaiah was saying. We would have been like Solomon and Gomorrah. We've been destroyed. We've been dead, gone. It's like I don't understand. Like the white man, they hate we here. But if it weren't for us, hell, it wouldn't be them. They'd have been dead. But they hate we here though, because they don't. I'm telling you, they don't understand God. But we understand God. If it weren't for us, it wouldn't be no America. All right, come on. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law? What then? Should we sin because we're not under the law of sacrifice? We ain't got to sacrifice animals no more? Come on. But under grace? But under Christ now? Come on. God forbid. It said God forbid. You can't continue in sin. All right? You cannot continue in sin. It said God forbid. You got to learn to let it go. Let the pork chops go. The pig feet. Got to eat you one more bowl of chili. Smell it one more time. You gotta let it go all right go back to now let's go to hebrews 10 right quick because time winding down i'm gonna go 15 more minutes <coughs> hebrews 10 let's start at 22 the book of hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22 come on let us draw near with a true heart all right so we gotta now thank god and draw near with what a true heart with a true heart meaning a true mind you can't be wavering in this truth this is the time this ain't the time to be bagging out this ain't the time to be like, I don't know if I want to do this. They fake over there. They ain't lawyer. She talking about me. He talking about me. I can't be an officer. I can't be a this. I can't. You know all the petty stuff people argue about. The scripture said what? Read that again. Let us draw near with a true heart. You need to draw near with a true heart. Because this, look, time winding down. If y'all ain't watching the news. Time winding down. All right, come on. And full assurance of faith. All right, for the assurance of what? Faith. Come on. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. All right, you got to have your heart sprinkled from an evil conscience. We learn evilness in this world. All right, we learn to think evil. All right, come on. And our bodies washed with pure water. All right, and our bodies need to be washed with pure water. We need to be baptized with the pure water. Give me Ephesians 5.26 for time's sake. I'm sure you brothers knew that, but... What's the pure water we need to be washed in? The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 26. Come on. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So it's the word of God. This is what we got to be washed in. The word of God. All right. If you're not being washed in the word of God, man, I don't know. You're being washed in the word of Satan. <laughs> you're being washed in, the, in, in this world and you're going to be washed up and washed out. For real, you're going to die in this world if you're not being changed, all right? And when you're being changed, you're going to mess up. You're going to do things that you ought not. You're going to say things that you ought not. You're going to, these things going to happen. But you got to get back up and do what? And keep a, what the scripture said right there in, um, 22. You, you, yeah, 22. You got to draw near with a true heart. I right, read 22 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart. All right. In full assurance and, of faith. Hold on. In full assurance, not halfway. All right. Some of y'all wavering. Some of y'all got one foot in the graveyard and the other one on the banana peel. You waver. One foot in the truth and one in the world. You wavering. You ain't got a full assurance yet. I don't know. I, I don't know if I just want to keep the Sabbath. I'm tired. I want to go to the mall. I thought you was tired. Not like that. I'm saying I'm tired. I want to go to I want to go to a birthday party. I want to go to the graduation. I want to do everything I can to break the Lord's Sabbath day. I want to just, I, I'm tired. I can't do it no more. That's how some people be feeling. Men and women. I'm tired. I don't, I don't want to do it no more. Hell, ever since I come to this truth, hell, I ain't, only time I miss the Sabbath is when I, the roads were messed up or I was sick. And I can say, or had to work, you know, or something like that. And I can say the same thing about these officers up here with me. Only time they have missed, that's how you got to think. This is a, a, a mind-blowing experience. This is going to be a change of your life. 
It's not you got to do this. You got to have your mind made up. Hey, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. And it can mess you up. You can start when you sit down thinking about it like, damn, you mean to tell me, hey, I can't go to the flea market now and now. I'm going to miss it on Sunday. Everybody been on got everything. Man, I, can't, I can't do this. Huh? You'll start thinking like that. Satan will start playing with your mind. Be like, man, you mean to tell me I can't go to the, my baby basketball game, football. I can't go to Pee Wee. I can't coach Pee Wee football on Saturday no more. Man, hell no. Nah, I can't do this. I was going to say, Cap, to even drive an hour and 30 minutes how you drove, that's determination. I, I never thought I'd drive two and a half hours to go keep the truth. Never thought in my life. And when I went to Memphis the first time, I was scared. I didn't know what the, I was getting involved in, too. But then when I went down, I said I was going to go once out of every week. Every other week I was going to go. And once I went that one time, I couldn't stop going. Sometimes we drove two cars down to Memphis. She drive a car, I drive a car. Hey, I don't understand some of you guys when you're playing with this true. I, I, hey, I don't understand. Yeah, so it ain't nothing to play with. If God got you here, he got you here for a reason. Now, you just like we said earlier, you got to wait on your ministry. Your ministry is coming. God called you here for a reason. Everybody in here play a different part in the body of Christ. God called you here for a reason, but you got to be patient and wait on your ministry. All right? That's what you got to do. And don't think there's no, there's no joke. This ain't no game. He going to show the people in 2021, as he did in 2020, people, I hate 2020. I hate it. I don't want to be here. Well, wait till 2001. 21, excuse me. 2021 come. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get worse. Everybody, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. Come to, what's her name? Come, Lisa. Kamala, Kamala. Kamala. Harris. I just got to think of it like a koala bear. <laughs> Kamala. I can't never. I would call her Kanda damn Lisa. All right. Kam Kalanda. Kamala. <laughs> Kamala. She black. Woo. Everything getting better. Man, look. I'm telling y'all. Things are finna get worse. Gas prices are already going up. I'm telling you. Everybody was voting for the, they thought was the greater, the less evil. But they going to show us, y'all, this ain't our place of rest. You can't get comfortable. All right? Ain't no wrong with wanting nice things in this place, in this time. Ain't no wrong with that. I'm not saying that. But don't get comfortable. This ain't our rest. Hey, we ain't going to have houses and roads built like this. Reading the Revelation, it said our, our streets going to be paved with gold. Diamonds. We're getting our jewels back. We're getting everything back that they stole. That's what y'all don't understand. Don't make this your rest. All right, don't get caught up in this world. This stuff going to get burnt up, all right? So, go back to where I had you at in the scriptures. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 22. Come on. Let us draw near with a true heart. All right, let us draw near with a true heart. Come on. In full assurance of faith. Uh-huh. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. All right, having our hearts sprinkled with the truth from that evil conscience. All right, meaning it's going to be a process. Throw a little here, throw a little there. Come on. And our bodies washed with pure water. And our bodies got to be washed with the word of God. Come on. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. So we got to do what? Hold fast the profession of our faith. We got to hold fast to what we got right here. The profession of our faith. We got to hold fast to what we got. All right, come on. Without wavering. And without what? Wavering. Without wavering. We seeing brothers and sisters wavering. We seeing the congregation flipping. Some people that was here last year, not gonna, they, they not going to be here this year because they wavering. And if they don't get themselves together, guess what? It's like a leaf blowing on the tree. The leaf just going to blow on off like a shaft, as the scriptures say. You're going to be like a shaft in the wind. just going to go on a blow. You're going to be right back out there doing what you were doing, wondering, talking about why you can't find a good man. Because you're sleeping with all of them on the first damn night. That's why. And you're trying to look for a good woman. And you just can't find her. And you're just looking for some weed now. You're looking for some drugs. And you're looking for some powder. And you're looking for all these other different things and alcoholism and stuff like that. Trying to um, satisfy your appetite of life. All right? Come on. For he is faithful that promise. All right? For he is faithful that promise. All right? The Most High God promised us the kingdom. Promised us this world back. He ain't going to go back on this word. Just like he said, if we disobeyed him, we was going to go into slavery. He didn't go back on his word. Just like he said he's going to deliver us, guess what? He's not going to go back on his word. 
That's why you got to have faith and believe in it. If you ain't got that faith, you're going to go back. you wavering. You got to build your faith up. All right? We got to help each other build one another's faith. And you don't do that being antisocial. You can't build, help one another build. I'm just going to talk to my friends. I'm just going to talk to sisters when I come to the Sabbath. I'm going to say, shalom. Get that long ass shalom. Face almost hit your lap. Then just go back and live six days out of the week. You don't even know nobody. Don't call, check on nobody. Don't say nothing. You got more friends in the in the world than you got in the truth. You're going to be wavering. I'm telling you now. The same thing with the men. If you don't call and check on one another and see what's really going on, and guess what? You're going to be wavering. You, you ain't going to understand why. Next thing you're going to be, oh, them niggas lawyer, this, this lawyer, them niggas, they fake. They this and that and the other. That's because you wavering. You're spending more time with people that don't know nothing than you're spending time with people that know a little something. All right? So let's keep reading. And let us consider one another. And let us do what? Consider one another. That's what I was just saying. We got to consider one another. Check on one another. Call. All right? Text. Come on. To provoke unto love and to good works. All right? And we got to provoke one another to love and to good work. Let's talk about how we can push this truth. Let's talk about how we can make the dogs of Sarah meeting better uh, last, uh, than last time. Let's talk about how we can make Titus 2's better. Let's talk about these things. Can't have one sister pushing, saying, hey, I want to do this and I want to do that. And she asks, hey, who can help do this and who do that? Then it's, it's everybody got these damn bright ideas. And then now everybody is quieter than a church mouse when it's time to fulfill um, the idea that you come up with. Like, for example, this is how Captain Hoshai used to do us. Like, we'll come up with an idea. It would be a bright idea. You got some good, bright ideas, right? We got some, all right over that then <laughs> that's how you got to be don't come up with no idea and then you think that somebody else is going to do all the footwork and getting your idea off the road off the ground excuse me and on the road so if you come up with an idea we got to provoke one another to good works to get that idea off the ground for example i think the walls in the school should be purple oh uh, you do oh this is just an example oh uh, you do Oh, okay. Uh, go get the paint. Uh, come up with how we gonna get the paint. You need to come up with how we gonna get the paint first. All right. How many rollers we gonna need? Who gonna help? This this something the person that said I need the walls to be purple. This something they need to be already had map, mapped out before you even say anything. And guess what? You gonna be right there with them painting the walls, unless you a handicap and your arms don't work. That's the only way. Cause if your legs don't work, you can still we can get you. We'll pull your wheelchair up there. And let you. <laughs> we gonna you gonna help since you came up with it, and that's how the women and the men we gotta think. We gotta provoke one another to good works. Just can't throw no idea out there. Well, or sit and talk about it. Well, they should have did it like this, and they should have done it like this, and they should have did it like this, and then you ain't done nothing. But talked about what it had should have been. Right. That's a that's a nigga. So in other words, mind. don't come with problems and no solutions. There you go. Don't come with problems and no solutions on how to fix it. All right. Or don't throw no ideas out there if you ain't trying to be a part of the work on getting it done. All right. So it says to provoke one another to what? Read that again. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love. And to good work. All right, to provoke one another to love and to good works. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Come on. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. So you got to thank God you in this truth and not do what? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. You can't forsake the assembly of ourselves. Come, excuse me. Come together and get to know one another. We can't forsake that. All right. We got to come together and we got to be here and do these things because God requires for us to do it. All right. Come on. As the manner of some is. All right, as the manner of some is. Some people forsake the assembly. They'll just lay at home. They ain't have they ain't gotta work. They don't they don't they don't care. They just ain't coming. You know what I'm saying? They don't just want to be around you niggas. I mean us niggas. <laughs> they don't just want to be around because they forsake it. They don't understand it. They wavering. And then they'll try to call and get other people not to come too. You know? All right, come on. But exhorting one another. And what? What? We supposed to be doing what? 
but exhorting one another. We got to learn to exhort one another. Call one another daily if you can. All right? Exhort one another. All right? Come on. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. All right? As you see the day approaching, you see uh, the time is drawing near. Christ is on his way back to deliver us. You want to be on the right side. Come on. For if we sin willfully. But if you just sit up there and break the Sabbath willfully, uh, you just sit up there and ate some po chops willfully, you just sit up there and did something willfully, guess what? After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. And you don't sit up here and receive the knowledge of the truth of who you were and who you are and what you must do to All right? And you sit up there and do it willfully and you don't repent. Guess what? If you, to do it and not repent means that you what? If I do something and I didn't repent, what I do? You keep doing it. I kept doing it, right? So if you sin willfully, you keep doing it and you don't repent. Keep reading. There were made of no more sacrifice for sin. It's saying Christ didn't die for you. To prove that is verse 12. Verse 12 is going to prove what it's talking about. There remain is no sacrifice. For, give me give me verse 12 in Hebrews right there. 10 verse, and 12. Just verse, to show you what it's talking about. No more sacrifice for sins. Verse 12. But this man. For after, what? This man. This man is talking about Christ. Read. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins. Uh-huh. Forever. Sat down on the right hand of God. All right. So it's talking about Christ. All right. Christ <laughs> didn't come to die for you. All right, if you keep on doing this thing willfully, all right, if you sin willfully and you just keep on, I'm just going to break the Sabbath. I'm going to just lay back and not be want to be around each other. Now, we understand you got things going on or um, work, sick, stuff like that. We understand, but if you're just doing it for the hell of it, man, I'm telling you, it's, it's, you don't know, you, you still, you double-minded. All right, you double-minded. With that, I'm going to end the class there. Uh, now, give me James 1 and 8 right quick then. I got two more minutes. I said I was going to go 15. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. All right. It said what? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. All right. So if you double-minded, you don't know what you want to do, you're going to be unstable in everything you do. All right. And everybody, all of us have that problem sometimes. I don't know if I'm going to do this. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I don't know if I'm going to do this. It makes your decision, your thought process, you unstable with your actions. And that's something that you got to fix. I don't know if I want to just, I got to wear, you tell me I got to wear a dress the rest of my life. That's how women, some women think. I got to wear this the rest of my life. Yes, the rest of your life. Everything happy but you. Everything happy. Everything get to breathe. And now that it's happy, it was shut up. It's been shut up since a pamper. Couldn't breathe, suffocating. Since your mama took you out the pamper, you went from pamper to pants. That thing ain't breathing in 30 some years. Now it's starting to breathe every day. You mad? You the only one mad. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That everything else happy. It's happy. They're praising the Lord. And you walking around mad. <laughs> For real. Some women think like that. I got to wear a dress. I had a woman ask me. At work, uh, not too long ago, your wife she wear dresses every day. I said yes, sir. every day. She said, "Whoa!" And she walking around with some damn yoga pants on, and she what five eight three hundred some pounds. Don't nobody want to see that. She need a dress or two. <laughs> For real, don't nobody want to see that. But she don't understand it. She thinking it's going to be a uh, uh, a burden for her to wear a dress. You know, just like men, men, we run across some problems too. What's some of the brothers, some problems you thought when you come to this truth? Like, I got to do this the rest of my life. What you got, Ruwak? Make it good. If not, it better be good, brother. It better be good. Growing that beard. Growing that beard. Hey, that is a good one, bro. I got to grow that. I got to grow that beard. They don't want to grow that beard because they think it's it's a problem. Yeah. You know, they want to get all the women because they want to look young. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one, Ruwa. I got to wear this stuff on my face the rest of my life. Yes. You know, you used to cut your, like Ruwa said, you cut your beard out. You want them young girls. Them young girls. You 40 something years old trying to look like you 19. Bruh. She old enough to be your daughter. 
For real, that's that's a hey. That was we thought it was gonna be burst, burdensome. Cause when you first start growing your beard, guess what? People call you like a crackhead and everything. Then when it filled on out, they was like, "Hey, bro, how you get your beard thick?" Oh, not you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, bro, how you get your beard thick? I always gotta mess with my brother though. <laughs> He's getting there though. He's getting there. That's my brother here. That's my brother. I'm keeping the commandments. Yeah, you keeping the commandments. I got. I'll tell you how to get it thick. Get with me out the class. Oh, All right. I'll tell you how to get it there. Oh, oh where's that bro right there? You want your thick? Well, you ain't got no babies. You got some babies? They got a pample. They pee in the pample. Oh, okay. You. I had to give you the other trick. Oh, y'all crazy, man. All right, let's end the class. Y'all know I'll be silly, man. I got to keep you smiling and keep you laughing because I like to see your teeth. They all white and stuff. I like I like that, man. Hey, hey, uh, any new people here for the 